reality, and history, and drama. December 1927, New York City, the height of the Roaring Twenties. An extraordinary event is about to take place, an event that will shock a fun-loving public and change the course of musical theater forever. It is opening night of a show unlike anything ever seen before. Opening night of a show. Jerome Kern was first attracted to it and suggested to my father that it would be a, a good musical idea. I think they were both attracted to those, what I can only call fundamental human elements that were contained in the book. Showboat arrived at a time in history when musicals were mostly froth and glitter. There were seldom sustained plots or character development. So when Showboat came along and dealt with serious themes, such as miscegenation and husbands deserting wives, it literally shocked New York theater audiences, who were accustomed to much more frivolous entertainment. Prior to Showboat, it was frankly a lot of fluff. Uh, it was a question of, of music hall mentality. Forget about substance of characters, forget about emotion. I mean, just let's make it all very, very superficial. Well, Showboat scrapped all those notions, and Showboat was finally prepared to take issue with the issues of the day. He says he was born in Mississippi, your pop was white, and your mammy black. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Showboat is interesting because it was the first time on a major musical stage that uh, blacks and whites were actually singing together on the stage. I think things like this revive the interest in what the American musical is all about. Frank. One thing that's interesting about this production is Hal's vision to make the music alive, keep the story going. So we've taken some, taken some of the operatic moments out and put them into a new context with the dance arrangements that David Crane and Susan Stroman have created. Susan called me and said, you know, the Charleston, which is the last number in the show, was in fact uh, invented by the black community. Come and oh, what I've seized <laughs> is the opportunity to show where young Kim and all her white friends learned the Charleston from. And I'm able to do that in the montage when we go through 25 years. I have... Um, three different street performers during that montage. One starts out as a one-man band, and this is on the streets of Chicago, and uh, the doorman shoes him away. Then we go to about 1915, and we have two black tap dancers. The doorman shoes them away. Then we get to 1921, and we have three black Charleston kids and a trumpet player, and a black doorman who allows them to stay there with white folks watching. So it's very clear that they are learning the Charleston from these kids on the street. In 1927, the Broadway theater was not what it is today. Blacks and whites were seldom seen on the same stage. Oscar Hammerstein committed himself to changing that situation with this show. You and me, we sweat and strain, body all itching and back. 
with pain. Talk that bad! Lift that veil! Get a little deeper, and you'll found there's a wealth of music in showboat. And I can't explain It's surely not his brain That makes me thrill The first production was well into five hours long. Kern's music has been cut from various productions. There is ragtime influence in the show. There's Charleston, there's Foxtrot, there is band music. There is very classically symphonic music. Showboat is a wonderful show for a lighting designer. It uh, has everything in it. It has dawn, sunset, the river, Mississippi. It has Chicago. It has every time of day, night, all seasons of the year. Go to Q48. We're using a lot of water. The whole thing is on the Mississippi. Even when we're in Chicago, we want to feel the, the river everywhere. So we have water under the stage that we can light up and we can open parts of the stage and light this water up so there's a sort of shimmering. We actually found a car called the DeWitt, which is in, has been in constant production, as far as I know. Uh, it's, it's a real car, a 1900s car. And, and they built us an early taxi. The stage is packed with scenery. The full scenery is very three-dimensional. It has to be lit from exactly the right angle to bring out all the shadows and the you know, feeling and texture of each, each piece. Hal Prince did not want this to look like a musical comedy. You know, hopefully I have kept away from that. And the only time that I get uh, a little glitzy, I suppose, is in the, the Trocadero and the turn of the century, uh, New Year's Eve. the dramatic and human elements that the story deals with. They're fundamental emotions that everyone can understand and identify with, and uh, it has great appeal. So many things that happen in Showboat are applicable to the problems of today. Um, it's warm, and God, with all we, we're watching today, and all we're hearing on the news today, and all we're seeing in the, within the family, this country is so, in any country, is so scary. And in Showboat, you got, you got it. You got a family sticking together. A love of family, and family in the larger sense, the family of man. That's that's what the show's about. That's what Oscar Hammerstein was about. 